Hi, I'm Bill. Ask me anything. Let's rock. I didn't even need to introduce you. Your name's Aaron. Aaron. I saw you. Okay. Yes, it was earlier. Okay, I was here but earlier. I remember. Yes. Aaron with two We're A's. We're in Las Vegas. We are in Las Vegas. That, that could be better. Where else would you want to be? Uh, we are the Pac-12 Conference of Champions. Where else would you want to be? Literally. This is what we live for. Literally nowhere else. When I told people that I was not only here, but that I would be talking with you. You know people? A you, couple. You, you nobody need, nobody, uh, nobody you, too important. You need so. to set your standards higher. Aaron, uh, who, who, two who, A's. Two A's, yes. L, two, two L's. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so first of all, uh, you know, I arrived at the arena right around three o'clock. Uh, we're recording here a little past or a little before nine p.m. Mm-hmm. How long have you been at the arena for? I wanted to ask you, but you told me to save it for air. So save everything for the air, Aaron. Okay, ask well, me anything. All right, we're recording. I How got here early. Okay, later than I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. But if you can't be on time, be early. But I took a wrong turn. I was wandering aimlessly through the desert, and the rain was coming down, and I missed my mark. And when I was trying to regain my bearings, you know, Mount Charleston, it was in the clouds. I couldn't see it. Uh, The Sunrise Mountains, they were obliterated by the fog. And so I finally stumbled, and all of a sudden it was there, T-Mobile Arena. And then all the teams started pouring in. It was just a thing of beauty, and I had so much fun all day long. I'm the luckiest guy in the world, Aaron. So I've heard you say that in many, uh, many other interviews, on air. Why do you consider yourself the luckiest person in the world? I'm alive. Mm-hmm. I'm alive. I'm with the Pac-12. I have my health. Sure. I'm madly in love with my wife of 31 years, Lori. Uh, more so in love today than the day I married her. And we have four children and nine grandchildren. And I get to spend my days on the college campuses of the Conference of Champions. Sure. And when you get to spend your days in Seattle at University of Washington, in Eugene, at University of Oregon, in Corvallis, at Oregon State, in Berkeley, at Cal, at Stanford, in Palo Alto, in Los Angeles, at USC, at UCLA, in Arizona, Arizona State, the new American university, the University of Arizona, Tucson, yes, the old Pueblo, the oldest continually inhabited community in all of the United States. This is Tucson. Tucson. Really? And then... You have the mountain states, Utah, the people of the mountains, and Boulder. Yes, all these power spots with the coolest people, the most interesting people, and young people who are chasing their dreams and trying to create a world for themselves. More importantly, a better world for all of us. And what our Conference of Champions is all about is the the convergence, harmonic convergence of academics, athletics, all leading to business. And we are right here now at the hub of the wheel in Las Vegas, which is an incredible business center. We won't even get into until you remind me that we should talk about the remarkable geographic aspects of Las Vegas. But the business that goes on, the business that goes down here, please read The Quiet Kingmaker of Las Vegas, Jack Sheehan. Oh my gosh, what a story. But what is happening here and the sports world that is coming yep. to Las Vegas? You got the Raiders and, and, and Mark Davis and, and the NFL. You got the Golden Knights and the NHL. And you've had so many different NBA events. But with the Conference of Champions moving the football championship sure. game here with the coast to coast basketball legacy that there's. It's going to start up next year in December right here at T-Mobile. you got this phenomenal arena, the most successful building in the land. Why do you say that? Well, well, because it's the busiest and it's the highest grossing building, T-Mobile. How else would you like to measure it? Well, I don't don't know. (laughs) You know, listen, a lot. And it's super fun. It is. For whatever kind of event you're coming to. And I've been to them all. I've been to hockey games. I've been to basketball games. I've been to concerts here. I've been to conventions here. And the bunker suites down below. And the suites up above. And just what they've done here. And what MGM, what MGM has been able to do in terms of leveraging 
their connections sure. and their business acumen to build this place in conjunction with AEG and Phil Anschutz and all the people that go into making this great partnership between MGM and AEG and that walk that comes in from the strip and then the park theater that's right there that is the most successful mid-sized venue here and the 35 venues that MGM runs right here in this core, this hub of the wheel, the center of the universe, there's really no need to go anywhere else. And I often say when I leave Las Vegas, why am I leaving here? Listen. Why don't we just have all the games Everything here, here right? Well, they have everything here. So you know, the food is fantastic, the hotels, the amenities, the, the excitement, the, the, the people, the, the knowledge, the conventions that just flock here. And then when you do get a free moment, mm-hmm. ah, the free yeah. moment, yes. What do you do when you have go a free moment? Go out to Valley here. of Fire. Okay. Go out to Red Rock National Recreation Area. Go right around the corner to Spring Mountain State Park. Go down the road to Blue Diamond. Go over the hills to Death Valley, Mother Nature's greatest sports arena. Go down the road to the Mojave National Preserve. Go over to the Grand Canyon and all the endless dizzying possibilities at the Grand Canyon. And then just up the road to the north and the east is Zion and St. George and uh, the gateway to Utah. Just absolutely fantastic. And it, it, it's it, it's unlimited the things that you can do here. And it's just, it, it's just a, a place in my life where I always look forward to Likewise. coming to. And never look forward to leaving. <laughs> that's that's but a I story live in San Diego, yeah. which is the greatest place on earth. So yeah. it, uh, it's good to get home. I rarely do these days. So for people, um, you know, listen, we got the the snobs on the East Coast. I won't name names, but you know, everybody thinks Greensboro is the greatest spot or New York. We're Tell not, people that have never not, been. We're not. We're the Conference of Champions. Sure. We're not concerned with what other people think. Sure. I mean, they're entitled to their own opinions, even when they're wrong. wrong. Yep. I'm and, with you. You know, when everybody thinks alike, nobody thinks. But I haven't come across anybody recently or maybe ever that says, man, I'm excited as can be to be moving to the east, to be moving to the south, to be moving to the upper Midwest. (laughs) We are the Conference of Champions. We are where everybody wants to be. We have the perfect demographics. We have all the great sponsors. We have the great job opportunities. All the states in the West are the fastest growing states. The economies of the West are just over the top. California, massive. If it was a country, it'd be the fifth largest economy in the world. Interesting. I and didn't know that. And you have Washington, Seattle, Oregon is on fire. Nevada, the fastest growing state in the country with a remarkable diversity that is just taking over this wonderful place. And, you know, the, uh, the opportunities for jobs. And, you know, this is where the future is is being determined. This is where it's being created. And this is where history will be written. Very good. I am the luckiest guy on earth because I got to grow up in this area. Sure. And I got to go to college in the Conference of Champions to two different universities, UCLA and then Stanford. You went to Stanford? And, yes, I did. I'm and sorry. Then, I did a lot of research. Expl- I, uh, w- and then can- our, uh, my older brother, yeah. who's uh, from the Conference of Champions, UCLA. My dad S- went son, to Cal. Yeah. Our son went to Arizona. Another son went to Stanford. And so we are... and. Uh, I lived in Oregon and spent a ton of time in Washington, uh, Utah, Colorado, high in the Rockies, let's go. And there's just nothing like it. And then Arizona, what a spectacular place. I just spent a a lot of time this spring in Arizona. And, man, I got to ride my horse. It was fantastic. I got to ride my bike. And I got to do the little bit of walking that I can do. I don't have the physical capabilities to to walk much. But I'm alive, and I have no pain, and I still have all my body parts, although far too many of them are fake and artificial. You know what's funny you say that? You'll never remember this. I met you in an airport probably about I 10 remember. years. You do? I do, yes. You remember what I said? What did I say? Something I'll, like, I'll, 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 you why, to... why are you so weird? No, 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 no. So I went to UConn, 
and it was when Hashim nice. Thabit was playing there. Yeah. Yeah, you remember What this. a player. Yeah, and I said... You came up to me. You talked to me about Thabit. I did. I said... Yeah. Whatever I, happened to him? Is he still alive? He's alive, yeah. I don't know where he's playing, but I said UConn needs a backup. And then you, in an airport in Connecticut, went through all your physical ailments as to why you couldn't play at well, UConn. Well, I was trying to answer your question. What was your question on this one here? Oh, no, I was just saying um, you were talking about your physical ailments, and so the, it wasn't really a I'm question as much of a statement. I'm doing great. So you're doing I've better. Had, uh, I've had, I'm doing great. great. I've had 38 Fantastic. orthopedic operations. Some of them have worked, <laughs> including the more recent ones. Very good. And both my ankles are fused. And if you, you don't me. understand what that's about, imagine. And, and the nerves, because of the 25-plus operations that I've already had on my feet, the nerves have all been cut by the surgeries. And so, so imagine if you don't understand what, what that would be like. Imagine if somebody had just injected massive amounts of Novocaine or Xylocaine or, or numbing material into your legs and, and you couldn't feel them. And then you had casts on, casts from, uh, plaster casts from your toes to your knee on both legs mm -hmm. and then try to get around. Yeah. But I just sort of stumble forward. I just kind of lean forward and then try to put the, the next stump out in front of me and get to where I try to go. So I heard you in another interview. Your first injuries, you weren't even aware. This isn't my first interview. No, 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 no. This isn't no, my no, first no. interview. When you, no, it, it's as far, I, I heard another one with you. I don't know if you remember it, but you know what? this is the most There's important this guy one out there. His name is person. Frank. Frank? Yeah. And yeah, he's, he's, like, he, he's like doing interviews. Okay. And using my name. Because yeah. I was going to say, I, I had... I'm very concerned, but... Okay. But I, but I, but I know Frank, and so... I, he's a cool guy? He's very cool. He's All about right. as cool as they come. Super smart. And what a kind soul, yes. No, because I was going to say, I, I had heard in this interview, Frank said that your first injuries when you were young... You just right. thought people have bad feet and right. bad ankles. Well, I was born with birth defects in my feet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. And then when I was 14, some thugs tore up my knee in a basketball oh, game. Wow. And, uh, and and then when I was 21, I was I broke my back playing basketball for UCLA. Oh, wow. And then, you know, I spent my life falling down, getting fouled, and getting in fights. And so it was the greatest thing in the world, man. I loved yeah. playing basketball. Basketball was... The grand celebration of life. But you it, it was, I, and it still is. And I'm just super lucky. Have I told you that I'm the luckiest guy in the world? I'm super yes. lucky in that I still get to be a part of the game. I haven't been able to play in 34-plus th years. Wow. I haven't been able to run in that time because running is the ultimate skill for basketball. You can't run, you can't play. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to walk for pleasure or for enjoyment or for exercise in... 41 years mm -hmm. and so Jeez. but i'm the luckiest guy a lot man i can ride my bike i can go to the pool i can go to the weight room i can go on tour with the grateful dead and bob sure. dylan and neil young yeah. and john fogarty and jimmy cliff and then what it's one of the great things about being here in las vegas is that all they're those, all here, they're all here yeah. right? and you don't have to go to all those other places that you were talking about you know sure. the, the places where nobody i know wants to move to yeah, i'm uh, from the east coast but, and we, out here, but so. we go anyway we because do. we go see. because we know how great the talent is and that's why I am so committed to the Conference of Champions and the Pac-12 because it all satisfies my criteria for how I make my choices in life. Okay. People, passion, and purpose. And I love what I do, and I love who I do it with, and I love why we do it. And when those things are not in sync, then I go do something else. But sure. I have zero desire to go do anything else from what I'm doing right now. So all, it, I, all I ever wanted in life was more. Sure. And one of the great things, in fact, the Pac, about the Pac-12 is that how much more you get. And that's what it, I was it, it, It's just, it's endless, and that's what I want. Sure. And I, I you know, I want more games. I want overtime games. Sure. I, I you got a lot of them with Oregon uh, this year. Yeah. Well, every game we had all season long <laughs> went right down to the final it possession. Did. It did. Until the last weekend when Washington became the best team in the conference yep. in 48 hours. And now they're just rolling. And wow, what a team. What a story. And one of the... 
one of the many things that I love about what's happened with Washington is that they didn't quit because mm-hmm. it's easy to quit. Yep, yep, and yep, it, yep. It's easy to lose. And how impressed were you? Because like Isaiah Stewart throughout the mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. that guy, that was one of the guys. He never stopped playing hard. Fantastic. Yeah. He's the epitome of what it means to be a member of the Conference of Champions, even though he's not from here. He's from New York. Yeah. And he learned. He, he, he went to high school in Indiana the last two years. And, but then he came out here and he gets with Mike Hopkins and he gets in this remarkable area that is the Pacific Northwest. Have you read The Good Rain? I have, the, I have uh, not, no. Oh, it's a foundational book. And then from there, you will just spring forward to all kinds of dizzying possibilities of life, of people, of humanity, of sacrifice. Of, but it, it, it just goes forever. And I'm so lucky in that people give me books. They send me books. I probably get 10 to 15 books unsolicited. What's the best book per, you've read per week. The, in the last year? I don't live in a qualitative binary decision making sure, sure, sure. world. I live in a world where I like a lot of things. Sure. There's things I don't like, but I distance myself from things that I don't like. Okay. And I, I stand at the fork in the road constantly. What was the last book that you read that you did? I'm just finishing up a fantastic book. And the, I only stay with books that are great books. Yeah? If the book's not great, I, I, I don't stay with it. And so, but the book I'm just finishing, I'm, I'm in the last 10 pages right now. And it's Alta California by Nick Neely. N-E-E-L-Y. Okay. And it is a book that was given to me by a friend, a teammate, and another member of the Conference of Champions and the Pac-12. And he handed me this book. He didn't say anything about it. He just looked at me and gave me a big smile and a wink as he handed me the book and went on his way. So you knew it was going to be good. And it takes a while for me to get to a book. Sure. Because my books are always stacked up. Mm -hmm. But because of who it was... I put it on the top of the stack. And as okay. soon as I finished the previous book, then I got right into Alta, Alta California. And it's a story of a guy, Nick Neely, who was a writer and who grew up in the Bay Area, but then moved to the Pacific Northwest. I think Idaho it was. But that's his other life is not what the story's about. He, as every writer is faced with, as every entertainer is faced with, is to come up with the idea for the show. Hmm. What is the story? Sure. And he decided that since this was the 250th anniversary of the first European ground exploration of the coast of California oh, wow. from Mr. Portola, okay. who was from Spain. Sure. And he was a military officer, and he was to lead 63 men on foot with some horses and some mules from San Diego to San Francisco, where no European had ever walked before. Wow. And there was uh, incredible numbers of first Americans who were already there. And uh, But the story that Nick Neely tells of, uh, of his walk duplicating that in, t- in today's world and how it's all changed, but to be able to jump back and, and, and forth and go off on these tangents that would just be so full of information and so inspirational and, and, and the history and the, the legacy and, and the foundation that was California created by the first Americans and then ultimately changed completely by the European invasion. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just uh, it's a spectacular book. Uh, that I have learned an incredible amount from, and like all good things in my life, I don't want it to end. How much do you consume from these books? Because I just feel like you have an incredible wealth of knowledge that you share with the audience. I don't know anything about anything. But you know everything about everything, I feel like. I know who to call when I get in trouble. Okay. Okay. But what about yeah. when you're on air? Because it feels like you have this wealth of knowledge, whether it's geographic or well, historical I, I, or whatever. I'm the luckiest guy on earth. I grew up in a culture of curiosity. Yeah, yeah. 
in a culture of exploration, of experimentation. Because your, your mother was a librarian, My right? mother is a librarian. Is a librarian, I apologize. She's still alive. She's 93, and she still lives in the same house we all oh, grew wow. up in. They moved there when I was born 67 okay. years ago. They okay. lived 10 minutes away, but they wanted uh, a, a, a bigger house, a bigger yard, because I'm the second of four children, the oldest of the still living children, and my parents, greatest parents ever, yeah. zero interest in sports, zero. So where did that come from? Because I, I heard you say, maybe it was Frank, but it said that you never shot baskets with your dad. He Never was, shot a single basket yeah. with my dad. my dad. My parents don't like sports. Okay. So where did the sports gene come from? I followed my older brother, Bruce, okay. as I have for most of my life. And while he was alive, then... I always followed him, Sure. although we are completely different people. And he and played in the NFL, right? Played in the NFL, played at UCLA, and okay. played, at oh, Helix, wow. played at yeah. Helix High School. Okay. And he played at our elementary school. And I followed him when I was eight years old one day after school because he wasn't going home for some reason. And I said, well, well, where are you going? He said, well, come on, come on, Billy, let's go. And so we went down. And that's where I found basketball sure. and ultimately found all the other sports because the coach that we had at the school was the volunteer coach. He was the town's fireman, but he had three children of his own. We were all the same age, all were classmates and everything. And he saw a need because at three o'clock every day in the 1950s and 60s, there was nothing for the children to do after school. Sure. And so Rocky, the fireman, he was looking out the firehouse door one day and all these children coming out with nothing to do and he stepped to the front and he said I'll take care of this and so he volunteered Uh at the school for 59 years wow every day every sport every child all year round he lived just a couple blocks from the school incredible. and the fire station was on the corner the school was in the middle and my mom's library was on just down the street and so there was this, this giant triangle of people and forces and opportunities. And Rocky, he never took a dime. Interesting. When he died a few years ago, he was the richest guy I've ever known. And I can't tell you today if he knew anything about basketball, <laughs> or foot, flag football, or baseball, or track and field, all the sports we played all year long. And But... He knew life, and he knew people, and he knew fun. What was the best and lesson you got from Rocky? we couldn't him? wait to get there. What was the best lesson you got from Rocky? I don't live in that qualitative binary. Okay, right, right, right. Can world. you name one that you got from him? A, a I lesson? I learned everything, everything from him. Sure. I learned everything from everybody. Okay. And I, that's what I try to do. I try to bind try to search for, find, and learn from master teachers. And I'm just super lucky that I've been able to continue to do that. And I and I have that same opportunity here with the Conference of Champions because I spend my days on at Stanford, at UCLA, at Berkeley, at USC, at UW, at Oregon, at Oregon State, and Arizona State, and Arizona, and Utah, and, and Colorado, and the smartest people in the world are there, and the nicest teachers, and the ones who have the greatest purpose and they're just and they're just there to give it all away and it's fantastic and then that's just the teachers yeah. and it has nothing to do with the students and the students are fantastic and you know they're the ones who are going to save us and save the world from ourselves and then the community and the fans and it's just, it's just and the I'm the luckiest good too. guy in the world. The basketball's never been better. It's just tremendous. Do you believe? Yeah. I, I've, it seems like this year. I mean, we're talking about potentially seven teams making this tournament. I know we don't want to be qualitative here, but it seems like this has been. The well, there's seven teams that deserve to be in the tournament. Mm-hmm. But like the electoral college, I am done and fed up with the automatic bids to these really? truck, to these truck stop conferences. Okay. And, so even know, the small schools that. You don't. You'd rather see a well win. You know. Let's, yeah. You know. Let's have a tournament with the sixty. How, how how many teams are there? Are there sixty four? Are there sixty eight? Are there sixty nine? How many teams are there? I, I don't 68 even. Sixty eight in the there's tournament. Yeah. There's not sixty nine. There's not no. a play in to a play in to a play in. Then we get to sixty four. No. It's we 60, could eventually, but sixty eight. Sixty eight. Yep. Yeah. So let's let's take the sixty eight best teams. Sure. So and, regular season champs. Of the small conference. No, let's f- have somebody who knows what the teams, who the best 68 teams are. And, you know, sure. earn your way in. Okay. Let's go. 
play, and, and let's get a champion. So, you, so, you know? but you think seven teams in the Pac-12, the Conference of Champions? There's been uh, seven excellent squads this year sure. in, in the Conference of Champions, uh, in no particular order, because I, I, I have no memory. <laughs> but so Oregon has been the best team. They won the and they won the conference. And then U- UCLA had a, a spectacular year and took second. Could have taken first, but they got beat on USC's court with a last-second brilliant shot by a fantastic player in yep. person, Jonah Matthews. Matthews yeah. And then uh, Arizona State was third. And then fourth is USC. And USC is on a, on a historic run for their program. Sure. And it's the best run they've ever had. And Andy Enfield, he just keeps turning out mm-hmm. scholar athletes, and it's just wonderful. And these guys go on and do really wonderful things in their lives, and and they just they make the world a better place. And then, then you got uh, the Arizona. Arizona and Washington matchup. Washington was twelfth, uh, sixth is Colorado, uh, seventh, and, you know, then uh, Utah Stanford. and Stanford. Is, is in there, and then Oregon State, and, and Cal, and Washington State. But but the seven teams that I think have had uh, NCAA tournament quality seasons, Oregon, UCLA, USC, Stanford, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State. Is that seven or is that eight? Is I that think that was seven, yeah. I don't know. I apologize for all the omissions. Because when I yeah. do these games, one of the things I do in my life is I broadcast basketball games. Yep. Right. And I take, uh, I love my job. I take it very seriously. You do, yep. And, and every, after every game, uh, I try to go out to dinner with the broadcast team. Mm-hmm. And and then I it's at, when dinner's over, because you have to eat after the games. Sure. And... But after the game, I go home and I just lie in bed all night long about all the things that I should have said, oh. all the things that I left out. And then I should get up in the middle of the night and write it down, mm-hmm. but I don't for some ridiculous reason. And Sorry. I'm no excuse for my failures as a human being. And I, but I, because if maybe if I got up and wrote it down then, I would be able to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm going to make that change right now. Okay. I'm going to start I'm getting up in the middle of the night. Now, thank you for being my therapist. And I'm going I to, got an extra I'm, pad I, if you want. I, I'm going to write it down. And, and then because when I do finally get up in the morning, when mm-hmm. I finally get out of bed after tossing and turning and all night, just watching that clock, then I do go to my desk and I do write it down. And then I somehow try to work it into the next time on TV. Sure. And, uh, and just to apologize to the world for not being better at who I am and what I do. Real quick, and we'll get you out of here. What What are you? Where are you going? I, I thought you would want to at least get dinner, start you know right now. Las Vegas. Twenty four hours a day. All right, I got nowhere to be. How about you tell us when John Wooden bailed you out of jail? I was reading about that today. Yeah, well, that was uh, a low moment for him, and a low moment in our relationship. Okay. Uh, one of the two lowest moments. The other was when I gave out his home phone number <laughs> you know, on, on uh, uh, at a big corporate event we were doing with okay. 20, with 25,000 people oh, wow. at okay. Staples Center and he, he he looked at me and but he he waited it out he didn't change his number this is the phone number okay the phone number yeah, yeah. And, you know, he had one phone number. He never had a cell phone. He sure. never had an assistant. He never had a secretary. He did everything himself. He was uh, incredibly self-sufficient and very proud and uh, incredibly inspirational person who uh, made me, uh, it was, he was, you know, one of those guys. You know, when I was a child, there was four four people in this big umbrella over Little Billy. Mm -hmm. Little Billy from San Diego with his red hair and his freckles and his big nose and his goofy, nerdy-looking face and his horrendous speech impediment. Rocky was one, right? Rocky, my parents. Okay, your two parents. Chick Hearn. Okay. Okay. And John Wooden. Okay. That was the world that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I I got to develop a friendship with Chick Hearn, Mm -hmm. my parents, Fabulous, greatest parents ever. Rocky, this most 
spectacular human being, no matter what he did, a foundational pillar of our entire community, Chick Hearn, the greatest broadcaster ever, who delivered a message of hope every single moment. And then John Wooden, who was this, this, I'm running out of superlatives here, but th- this person who became an English teacher. You know, his life changed so much, and that's, as mine has as well. I mean, I'm on Bill Walton 20.0 right now. I <laughs> had to start over from nothing 20 different times, and I've, uh, I've kind of figured it out how to do it again because it's happened so many times, but it, it's never fun, <laughs> and it's never easy, but it's what life's all about, and that's Another reason why I love the Pac-12, because this is this is the ultimate springboard to life. It's what it's what allowed me to become who I am. I mean, I got you know my dream. My dream was to go to UCLA and play for John Wooden. I I, I knew I was going to play in the NBA. I started playing against NBA players when I was 14 years oh, old. Oh wow! Okay. And but you know. The, we grew up in our house without a television set, and I got to see basketball on television. I, I, we, we had a radio and books and the newspaper, so I was following basketball from the time I was eight, uh, eight until about, uh, I'm going to say, let's see, 13, uh, when I saw uh, my first basketball game on television okay. and the first game. Where did you see it if you didn't have a television at your house? Down the street okay. at my buddy's house. Okay. He had a TV. Sure. And I read in the newspaper that the game was going to be on TV. And it was the 1965 NCAA championship game from Portland, Oregon. Okay. UCLA versus Michigan. Michigan, okay. Cassie yeah. Russell? UCLA was the defending champion, 30 and 0, but they had lost Walt Hazard. Interesting, okay. And so, I mean, I had known about all these guys. But only by reading about sure. them and listening to the radio about them. And then I saw it on TV in Michigan, man. They had these big, bruising dudes, man. They all looked like Isaiah Stewart. Just, <laughs> sure, just sure, sure. huge, you know. And then, and then UCLA had all these little skinny, scrawny guys like me. Sure. You know, Keith Erickson, Kenny Washington, and Gail Goodrich. And I'm watching this game, and UCLA just put on a clinic and just ran them out of the building. Michigan was undefeated in rank number one. They had the college player of the year in Kazi. But UCLA was the champion, and UCLA had John Wooden, and UCLA had Gail Goodrich. And Gail Goodrich that night went for a championship game record of 42 points. And I said to myself when the game was over, I said, that's what I want to do. Wow. That's what I want to do with my life. I, I, I want to play like that. I want to be like that. I want to play for John Wooden. I want to go to UCLA. And that dream did come true, although my dream became John Wooden's worst nightmare. Yeah. I was his easiest recruit, and I drove the poor guy to an early grave at 99. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, 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 poor guy. He'd still be going He'd be he'd going strong. He'd be going, yeah. Well, uh, you... You had to have been there. It was. It was. Uh, it was not tough on him. Well, I was tough on him. Yeah, that's what I mean. And yeah. I, 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 I failed him, and I failed everybody else. But, but I read that you didn't realize it until you got no, to the NBA. No, you thought, I, yeah, because no, I, your parents and Coach Wooden. Well, I just thought that everybody had a great childhood. Sure. I thought that everybody had a great life. I thought everybody had great schools and great teachers, and 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 I thought everybody had. Everybody else in their life care about them. Yep. I never encountered anybody that didn't have my best interests at heart yeah. until I joined the NBA. Interesting. And yeah. but the NBA, well, I mean, what a fantastic success story that is, and what it has become. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh! And that, like, uh, so much of our world is better than ever, too. Sure. Yeah. Anything else on the Conference of Champions that we haven't hit on in terms of what's coming these next few days? What's or? your name again? Uh, Aaron, Aaron, two A's. Bill's my name. Two, two L's, L's, right? Okay. Two L's, yes. Okay. And I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I get to spend the rest of this week with every member of the Conference of Champions. And we're going to see who can play. We're going to see who's in shape, who's willing to put it out there, and who is willing to embrace the elements of success in a group dynamic. 
And those are honor, sacrifice, and discipline. And the coaches are all so great. Sure. And most of the players already know this. The ones that don't, they'll learn. It'll be a very painful lesson. Sure. And they will be like me, where at the end of the line, they'll say, darn it, I really blew that. Sure. But when you do win and it does all come together, it seems so easy when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing ever easy about anything. Sure. As soon as you find something that's easy, please let me know what it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. All right, Bill. Well, and your name again? Aaron. Aaron. Okay. I'm Two ways. Okay. So next time I see you in Connecticut at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. It's Shim the Beat. Will it be the beat or who will it be? Well, listen, you know. Um, There's a lot of other good players out there. Yeah. I, we, you know, the, the, their starting center actually just got hurt again, which is neither here so nor there. So you're a UConn guy. I am a UConn Jim guy. Jim Calhoun. Yeah, Jim Calhoun has been on this podcast. So. so tell Jim hello. Have you been following his D3? So, he's yes, in I a, have. Well, he's I'm incredible. A, I'm a big fan of Jim Calhoun. Yeah. I knew Jim Calhoun from when he was coaching coaching Northeastern. Eastern, sure. Yes, and he. How did you cross? Oh, because you were in Boston, right? Celtics. Yeah. He's a Celtic. He was. On, oh. He was on this. He is as New England as it gets. Fantastic, and what he has done. You know, what, what what he has done is what Lute Olson did in Tucson. Uh, it's what Dana Altman is doing in Oregon. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what it, it's the dream. The, it's the dream of creating something that's really special. Sure. And you know, here in Las Vegas with the Pac-12, where you go back in history, and all the great advancements in our lives have come through the Pac-12, through the Western United States and and, and the spirit and the unity that we have and the passion and the and, and the purpose and, and, and it's just when you see it happen for other people, you're just so happy, particularly when they're so young. Sure. But it, it it's not limited to young people. And you know, there's nothing greater than to witness someone else's success. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Thanks for having me. That's a perfect way to end. Bill Walton, Pac-12 Network, Pac-12 Tournament hey. starts Wednesday. Aaron, right? Aaron with yeah, two A's. I yeah. remember you from the airport. Yeah, okay. There we go. The Beat. The Beat, yes. Yeah. He is still alive, by the way. I, was, I searched it while we were. You have you can talk, type, and think at the same time? I can't do yeah. that. Yeah. I can so. only do one thing at a time. All right. and, and none of it very well. <laughs>